Hi everyone, welcome to Sunya IS. In this session, we will continue the series of modern Indian history. Here in today's session, as you can see, we are starting with the new topic, which is about the revolutionary activities. Right? In this particular session, we will understand that how different parts of the, uh, you know, Indian states or different states in India. how they started the revolutionary activities and what is the meaning of revolution so when you talk about revolution revolution is a clash between old and new let's say there was an old order and people in a new era they don't want it anymore but they don't see any support coming from political or administrative levels and when they see that rulers or politicians or government is not really taking care of their demands they start the revolution so that they take the charge on their own hand okay so when people general masses general public civilians tribals peasants when they take the charge of changing the government or changing the time of you know having a new development or a new st era started that is revolution why it happens it happens just because sometimes there is a failure in the government machineries administrative powers are not working well and in case they don't work well they somehow invite other people to come and take up the authority right now let's say that you are a student right you need to study something but in case you don't do so it's your duty to study but if you don't follow your duties if you don't do it nicely then what will happen the things which you need to do or which you aspire to do would be done by someone else maybe someone who will have the charge in his or or his or her hand even if it is something on your personal level or a family level so it happens like this only it is all about taking the back seat or driving the car so driving forces when they fail then people who are at the back seat they come forward and they take the charge that you just you know uh, move on we will just do things by our own will and as we don't see any developments coming out from your ways then we can have our own path being followed so here let's start from bengal because bengal was the epicenter of nationalism when we saw that there was a split uh, among the you know leaders congress leaders extremists and moderates they got a split and it was in 1907 in surat session so with the surat split what happened was somehow revolutionary activities also got triggered because many of the youngsters they were radicals and they wanted to change something but they saw no view in the congress leadership and sometimes when they themselves understood that you know leaders in congress inside the congress are fighting among themselves people you know somehow got offended and they thought that they are disillusioned and there was no way to synchronize this energy and that's why things got you know uh, you know distracted turn so let's understand how it was uh, however in this situation the bravery the personal level of sacrifice is very much admired and commendable but the problem was that still they were not organized enough they were not prepared enough funds were not nicely you know uh, maintained with them they were not able to raise funds on time sometimes because of the lack of money and planning these revolutionary activities failed okay but still we will see how they created an influence and how they pressurized the british government so by the 1870s the calcutta student community it was honeycombed with the secret societies honeycombed means many secret societies were working here in the calcutta's student community so many students from different secret societies came in this area and they were trying to discuss things like what we can do how can we uh, make this government fearful how can we raise our voice how can we raise the demand how can we get something on a political scenario but they were not very active means they just had few discussions 
and they were just working but in a very uh, normalized flow right and they were very moderate because there was no trigger right there was no triggering effect but the first revolutionary groups which got organized in 1902 it was in midnapur okay the first one and it was un under gyanendra basu or jnanendra basu okay gyanendra nath basu and in calcutta the anushilan samiti was there anushilan samiti it was founded by pramodh mitra or pramodh mitra fine i can see that there is a question by abhishek kumar first phase normally from 1905 say 1917 bolte hain see uh, the problem is that uh, we need to understand that there is no particular date of a phase or a time like if i say that when do you think that when the medieval indian history starts then uh, we all can have our own dates and time periods to divide it you can divide it from the starting point of 7th century also and you can start it from the 11th century also or you can start it from the 12th century also if i ask you about the starting part of your modern indian history then you may say that with the arrival of europeans it got started or maybe with the arrival of moguls or maybe after that okay now the problem is uh, if we say that these revolutionary activities when they got started exact date or the time that is something very very uh, you know difficult to answer because it's very unclear why because see it started due to the partition of bengal in 1905 but if i say was it only due to that partition of bengal or was there any other discomfort yes discomforts were already there but when the bengal partition happened people got angry that anger got converted into revolutionary activities so the reason comes from 1905 in a very lawful way but it got uh, highlighted in the surat split of 1907 fine and after that we will see that after 1907 in 1902 only the midnapur was there in which first revolutionary groups were getting organized so that means that even before the partition of bengal we had few groups right if we talk about the calcutta student community they were you know started meeting by the time of 1870s only so you can say that they were working before the foundation of congress right so i hope you got the point that why i stated that date of 1907 because of the surat split i mentioned it okay mitra mela abhinav bharat anushinal samiti form pushed uh, extremists to be more aggressive uh see one point is here abhishek you have a very good doubt and i really like this uh, you know approach of questioning things in a very analytical manner the question is does mitra mela abhinav bharat and anushilan samiti formation pushed extremist to be more aggressive the answer is no somehow they got support their ideas got highlighted but they were not pushed why see so understand there is a difference between an organization or a samiti or a revolutionary group and a political party okay congress is like a political party it's like a you know it's like a party it's like a political platform in which members are there among those members we had few moderate members and few extremist members but they all were there in the congress fine here we have congress on the other hand we had few revolutionary groups samitis organizations few of them followed very moderate approach like they just used to you know uh, spread distributions of pamphlets they used to distribute different articles and uh, they used to do some workshops create awareness and do some social contributions social discussions and all but few of them started raising funds by takaitis and they, you know they started uh you know gathering the arms and ammunition to fight in a very violent way few of them were extreme and you know extremely violent so we can't say that all these groups somehow inspired the extremist leaders but extremist leaders were concerned about them okay 
they knew extremist leaders knew that somehow these people you know in the revolutionary groups they want something and the radical change is needed but the problem is that we need to understand that uh, these revolutionary groups sometimes followed very unlawful activities which used to be unlawful in the eyes of the britishers okay they used to murder kill and do things in a very uh, you know you can say criminal way but these crimes were to make india independent so we can call it a struggle right and they used to lose their lives also sometimes so it was a sacrifice they were working at their own level with their own mindset but it was a crime in front of europeans but it was a powerful thing and a sacrifice in front of indians we indians like them we indians like bhagat singh but europeans don't like bhagat singh if you uh, ask them that uh, how britishers uh, took the example of bhagat singh or how do they see the, uh, see bhagat singh the role of bhagat singh they consider they, they even today they consider him as a terrorist but we consider him as a freedom fighter why because the government was a foreign government a british government so in front of the british raj criminal activities were done and so many unlawful activities were committed by the revolutionary groups but if you talk about congress in the congress so few members were there it's very much like a family in which even if you see your own family all the members are not same few of the members would be very peaceful okay they may have a very a uh, ignorant attitude some of them may be very strict okay if you just analyze your own family members if you have a sibling you can see that your sibling is very different from your own approach and perspectives so it is always possible in a family so congress is a different family among those family members few extremist leaders came now why they are known as extremists because they can go extra constitutional they wanted to raise their voice they wanted to protest they wanted to go outside the bengal okay and they just wanted to uh, you know mix up with the masses and supported the radical ideas also fine supported the radical ideas of the revolutionary groups also but moderate leaders never supported the revolutionary groups i hope you got the point individual heroic action yes fine and uh, sunil you asked about the chapter's name see if you can see it is it is written in the topic right lesson 10 first phase of revolutionary activities can you see it's written in the you know video itself so that's the name of the lesson however if you open the spectrum book it's in chapter number 12 okay i don't know if it is in 12 or 13 but maybe 12 in the new edition just check it now let's come back to the topic i hope you're getting the point what are we discussing today see this is the energy of the live class when we meet live this is to get something this is to do something why don't i record the video and post it on the youtube it is very easy for me okay and it will save my time also but it's not just about views and reaching millions and you know a uh, creating a playlist to just complete a book no my intention is to interact with you guys i really feel like there are many students who need help and as we know that the prelims exam is postponed now so we have more time to prepare so that's why i just want to do this uh, you know mission with you guys where you would be able to interact with someone on daily basis that there is someone live and you can always come and ask anything which is even not related to modern history that is also answered in the class right so this is just to have an interaction so that we have a chill pill and do some study so it's like that fine now we understand the topic of today's particular lecture is the revolutionary groups i told you that we had two phases of revolutionary activities in india in the first phase we will discuss the time period which is during the first world war okay this is the time period when the activities started after the partition of bengal and the surat split of congress if you talk about these activities even if activities got highlighted and activated later 
but the groups were already formed fine so it's not a work of a one or two day right it's not something which you can just create and make like this no it was not a magic it was something which was already there existing but got activated later as you can see in 1870s these people these students from different uh, you know so secret societies used to come and sit but they were only talking they were not doing anything but they became active later after the partition of bengal so if you talk about the first revolutionary groups first was in midnapur under janendra nath basu in 1902 and in calcutta anushilan samiti was there founded by pramod mitra and including jatendra nath banerji also varindra kumar ghosh and many other revolutionary leaders now if i ask you that whom do you consider uh, you know having contributed maximum in the independence of india moderates extremists or revolutionaries what do you think moderates extremists or revolutionaries few of them were very very important during the moderate phase because moderate phase created a base of nationalism and awareness in india on the grounds of which mass struggle could be prepared later however they were very very slow they took 20 years to prepare this ground but still it was useful if we ta talk about the extremist group it really utilized that ground of mass struggle in a better way with the later stages but many of these students and many indians even today think that revolutionaries like bhagat singh and gadar party they gave us independence because of those only we got something because they were the real heroes they were the real freedom fighters who used to follow the individual heroic actions and never wanted to join a party platform or to you know they were not working to get a leadership or a name or a fame in some of the uh, party like uh, congress or muslim league or you know any other platform which was uh, popular at that time no they were not working for popularity or to get inside a party or to get inside a, a, a thing or a box to just make a career no they were just doing something from their heart nowadays we don't see people like this right if i even if we just ask uh, general people around us or if i just ask you or if you ask me it would be very very difficult hardly anyone any one of us will join uh, after sacrificing everything the family personal life career life just for the country okay it's very easy to say that yes i want to serve the nation but when it comes in the real challenge in front of the real people then it becomes very difficult so these people so many people we should appreciate their efforts physical and moral training to the members and they remain very in, insignificant till 1907 to 08 okay so what they used to do they used to give only physical and moral training to the members why physical training that in case there is a war like situation or a battle like situation few of the youngsters could be prepared to go and fight against britishers and moral training so that they are nationalist in their behavior patriotic in their behavior and would serve the nation in a good way right so these members only got few physical and moral trainings but they were not significant why because there was no trigger so the trigger was the partition of bengal and surat split so after 1907 all these groups and these students community secret societies they got activated so when they got activated the first phase of revolutionary activities got started in india fine i hope you understood the point those of you who just joined the session kindly like and share the video you guys are not supporting me well however i thought to increase the sessions in this lecture series but i really also want to end it now because i feel that by 
the next week i'll just you know finish it off because i really expected a lot of students to come live and interact with me you guys are watching it many of you are there uh, but they watch recorded session later they don't come live and i don't see many of you sharing also because i am very active in all the social medias and telegram groups and you know in a, each and every part everywhere i just see and check all my students like what exactly they are doing what is in need or demand with the students and aspirants but i don't see my lectures are getting shared a lot so i just want to see few links few more links on the platforms if you can do so that will be highly highly appreciative and i will plan a new lecture series only if you motivate the platform now come to the next one a very important leader rash bihari ghosh okay or rash bihari bose he is a very very important leader and he played a very significant role one more was sachin sanyal so these two leaders they had organized a secret society okay and they were using very uh, you know rural and far flung areas so they organized a secret society in which they covered the far flung areas of punjab delhi up united province and some others like hem chandra kanungo went abroad for military and political training so can you see their mindset and approach they you know used to discuss things that if we are having 10 members in this secret society then each and every member should tell that what kind of contribution they can make like if someone is is like an engineer that person can make radio or something like that if a person is doctor then will give medical services to all the medical uh, you know uh, members in the group if someone can you know could go to the foreign country for any military training or uh, arms and ammunition training then that can that person can go there if a person is more happy and comfortable in rural rural areas in far flung areas then the, that person can go, go in that area so they divided the work like this so it's like a team work and when they all supported each other they understood that they were able to create a very big amount of change so in this way they understood that each and everything needs to be covered so a 360 degree approach was there and they thought that nothing is wrong in this particular scenario of war they understood that the situation of india is getting worse day by day they knew that indians were suffering they knew that britishers are exploitative and they understood the real character and nature of britishers so somehow they had this purity in their mind and clarity in their mind that we are working for the nation and everything is fine in this situation when they wanted to raise funds they used to do dakaitis however sometimes they used to become thieves robbers you can call and use any words for them but it doesn't mattered for them they were so ignorant about these things they were like we just want money we just want to liberate our country we will do whatever it takes let people say whatever they want and in case someone is suffering or dying due to this or having any problem with these activities then it's just a part of plan we can't do so we can't help it and they could not help it because it's not possible to make a 100% perfect plan if you are making something big and if you really want to challenge the government then it will always take a lot of deep efforts and in these things you can't you know avoid few silly mistakes they will become a part of plan itself and you need to ignore these things so they became ignorant to these emotional and utter influential and general issues they became very drastically strategic and sometimes they behaved like a uh, you can say a person who is very emotionless okay so they became like that okay they were uh, they were not thinking very emotionally now they started planning things in a very strategic way that they just want to do something and with a very very you know focused goal they will do and go for it in 1907 yugantar group 
okay yugantar group an abortive attempt was there which was made by yugantar group on the life of a very unpopular british official sir fuller okay they wanted to kill this person but they were not able to do it sir fuller was the first lieutenant gov uh, governor of the new province of east bengal and assam which is in east bengal which is bangladesh now okay so as you know that the eastern bengal was the muslim dominance area and britishers created it to just follow the divide and rule policy and britishers somehow just wanted to create a disturbance so the new governor the first governor sir fuller was the british official but before they could you know kill him or do something against him he had resigned from the post he resigned on august 28 1906 so this attempt was not successful but here you can understand and imagine the you know ideas and the level of actions they used to prepare like we discuss something about moderates and extremist congress leaders but we have not read anything like this it is crazy right to kill like a governor who was in the new province of eastern bengal it was something out of the mind in december 1907 there were attempts to derail the train on which the lieutenant governor sri andrew fraser was travelling in 1908 here praful chakki and khudiram bos you can see here these two people look at the images clearly they threw a bomb at the carriage okay and they thought that the carriage would be having a you know sadistic white judge kingsford in muzaffar nag uh, muzaffar uh, pur uh, however uh, in the the kingsford was not in the carriage uh, so this attempt was not completely successful but unfortunately because of this bombardment unfortunately two british ladies in street got killed because of which praful chakki shot himself dead while khudiram bos was tried and hanged so here you can see that how britishers used to take actions against these revolutionaries these leaders somehow knew that the way they are moving against the government and the actions which they were planning they had a good idea that in case they get caught they will be hanged or there would be a very harsh measure against them still they you know took these kind of steps and uh, sometimes they decided to kill themselves or do suicide or uh, run away from the country sometimes they just you know got captured and uh, then when once they were captured or tried most of them were hanged only so this is something which is very very important and it shows you the british approach against these revolutionary leader in 1908 we had a barah dakaiti it is again a very important point understand this it was organized by dhaka anushilan samiti and it was under pulin das they wanted to raise some funds they wanted to have some money for the revolutionary activities raj bihari bos and sachin sanyal staged a very spectacular bomb attack on viceroy harding while he was making his official entry in the new capital of delhi and in a procession through chandni chowk in december 1912 Harding was injured but not killed but this injury is a very big victory for the indians right so they used to you know show their anger and they wanted to make europeans go away from india anyhow investigations followed the assassination attempt led to the delhi conspiracy trial in this delhi conspiracy trial many of the revolutionary leaders and names got highlighted and some of them got captured later at the end of the trial basant kumar biswas 
Amir Chand, Avad Bihari were convicted and executed for their roles in the conspiracy. They all lost their lives. So these names are very very important for your prelims because in the exam they ask you directly from these cases by taking the names by using the terms and officers like they may ask you that what do you mean by Delhi conspiracy case in the exam. Okay, and I wish that you will always solve it with a good clarity. Now, if we talk about Rash Bihari Bose, he was known as a person behind the plan, but he evaded the arrest. He was not arrested. He only planned this Delhi conspiracy case. So, he just escaped from that area. And in the western part of India, Western Anushilan Samiti, they found a good leader in Jatendranath Mukherjee or Bagha Jatin. Okay, he was a very, very great leader and he emerged as a Yugantar or a Yugantar and he was working in a very good way. We will discuss more about Bagha Jatin or Jatendra Kumar, uh, Jatendranath Mukherjee. I'll discuss more about him. During the Gadar revolution, we will discuss during other revolutionary activities, we will highlight these names. Jatin, you know what he did? He revitalized the links between the central organization in Calcutta and other places in Bengal, Bihar and Odisha. He wanted all leaders to come together. And during the First World War, the Jugantar party arranged to improve German, import German arms and ammunition. If you remember, yesterday I made a flowchart for you in which I showed that Britishers were fighting against Germany in the First World War. So, Britain and Germany, they were enemies. Britishers ruled on India. So, Indians took help from Germany. They knew that Germany can always provide arms and ammunition because Germany was the enemy of Britain. So, through these sympathizers and revolutionaries abroad, he got this opportunity to bring these German arms and ammunition. Okay. He was able to get a lot of success in this area. Jatin asked Rash Bihari Bose to take charge and collect these arms. Okay. So, Rash Bihari Bose was taking care of the upper India and they were aiming to bring about an all India insurrection in what has come to be called as the German plot or the Zimmerman plan. But this plan was not successful, but there was a caution in prelims from this particular line. The Jugantar party raised funds through a series of Dakaitis which came to be known as Taxi Cab Dakaitis and both Dakaitis so as to work out the Indo-German conspiracy. It was planned that a guerrilla force would be organized to start an uprising in the country with the seizure of Fort William and a mutiny by armed forces. They planned everything in a very good way. Unfortunately, for the revolutionaries, the plot was leaked out by a traitor. So, they had a traitor and uh, that person was not with him. Uh, they were not with the team and that's why this conspiracy failed. But you can see how nicely people organize themselves. This organization, it will improve more during the second phase of revolutionary movements. But right now, focus that this is the time period of or around the First World War. And in this situation, you can see that how Jatin asked Raj Bihari Bose to take up the part of Upper India. They organize guerrilla warfare. Uh, programs also. They, you know, were doing a lot of Dakaitis as taxi cab Dakaitis, boat Dakaitis. So, this is a very big plot, right? It is a great level of plot, right? Abhishek, you can just search my name simply or you can just search the uh, Sunya Ice platform also for the same.
Yes, Abhishek, I can see all your comments, your statements are very, very nice. Sometimes you can, you know, say that uh, every statement is not completely true and not completely wrong. It is all about where you say it and when you apply it as an example. So just try to understand that we get very energized when we talk about these revolutionary groups. But here, just have a disclaimer in your mind that while writing answers in mains or giving answers in interview, you don't need to lose your patience. Don't show that you are a kind of a revolutionary person inside. Don't be very radical in your approach. Follow a balanced approach, a mid path, in which you should appreciate the role of moderates also, role of extremist leaders also, role of Gandhiji also, role of Bhagat Singh also, role of everyone. Okay, in front of you, everyone is same. Behave like a mother. For a mother, all the kids are same. She loves each and every kid in a very equal way. So have an equal approach when you read something. Don't love a topic more and don't hate a topic more. Okay, you should not have this feeling of attachment or detachment from different topics in history because it happens. Because when you read history, no, you will feel that you will feel a lot of changes in your thinkings and behaviors. It changes your daily lifestyle also. It's a very different kind of subject. It is not like other subjects. So when you read history, you will feel a kind of, you know, blood boiling inside your body. Sometimes you will feel goosebumps. Sometimes you will feel very sad, upset. Sometimes you will feel angry. Because it's like a story of your country, right? And if you have uh, uh, even a, a small string attached as a patriotic feeling with your country, then you will always be moved with each and every topic of modern history. But don't get a lot of drawn into it, okay? And you can write these things in comments and talk to me like this, but you can't uh, write it in the exam, okay? Because their uh, opinion of aspirants somehow uh, doesn't matter a lot. So aspirants also need to understand that they write everything in a very, uh, you know, good way. And even if a criticism is there, the criticism should be very constructive and positive. Use positive words even if you want to write or give, you know, any negative opinion on something. For negative things also, if you will use the positive words, you will gain, gain more marks. Okay, it's a psychological trick to write the main answer writing. So, we have a lot of negativity against the British Raj. And we really hate a lot of problems and exploitations which we suffered through. And even today we are suffering due to the colonization, right? But that should not come in the answers of international relations. It should not come in your mind if you become a diplomat, right? If you become an IFS officer and if you represent your family uh, or, you know, your country, your uh, government, you need to behave, right? So just follow that and be very smart. Fine? Now come to the next question, next point here. We were discussing about few revolutionary activities. So I was telling you about that Zimran plot or German plot, okay? So Rash Bihari Bose was in the upper India. They had these taxi cab dakaritis. They were having funds. They had planned the guerrilla force also. And they wanted to start from the Fort William. But the problem was that police came to know the Bagha Jatin was in Balasore. And they understood that he is waiting. He was waiting for the delivery of German arms. So there when police understood this, they went to just capture Bagha Jatin. And to control it, there was a gunfight. In the gunfight, as a result of which the revolutionaries were either killed or arrested. The German plot failed and Jatun Mukherjee was shot and died a hero's death in Balasore on the Odisha coast in September 1915. Okay, it, this is the story of Bagha Jatin. Okay, Jatin Mukherjee who followed this German plot, wanted to do so but died a hero's death. 
ओके आई होप यू लाइक दिस स्टोरी ऑफ जतिन मुखर्जी सो वी शॉल डाई टू अवेकन द नेशन वॉज द कॉल ऑफ भागा जतिन द न्यूज पेपर एंड जर्नल्स एडवोकेटिंग द रेवोल्यूशनरी एक्टिविटी इंक्लूडेड संध्या एंड युगान्तर इन बेंगाल एंड काल इन महाराष्ट्र सो प्लीज रिमेंबर ऑल दीज नेम्स बिकॉज दीज न्यूज पेपर्स एंड जर्नल्स रियली विस्ड पीपल टू ओपन देअर आईज एंड रेज देअर वॉइस क्लियर ओके डू यू गाइज हैव एनी डाउट स्टिल नाउ let me know if you want to ask something now we will come to the next state which is maharashtra we discussed something about bengal now we will discuss about maharashtra okay so before i come to maharashtra you can ask your doubts if you want to discuss anything ओके नाउ लेट्स कम टू दी महाराष्ट्र द फर्स्ट ऑफ द रेवोल्यूशनरी एक्टिविटीज इन महाराष्ट्र it was organized uh, you know as ramosi peasant force by vasudev balwant so with the name i hope you can understand that peasants were very very important here so ramosi peasant force by vasudev balwant phatke so vasudev balwant phatke in 1879 organized this uh, revolutionary force they aim to rid the country of british rule by instigating an armed revolt by disrupting communication lines so they were trying to disrupt the communication lines and start an armed revolt so they you know planned something like this during 1890s tilak propagated a spirit of militant nationalism militant nationalism means if you have a feeling of nationalism then you should have a feeling to go against the government in a very militant way with this strong behavior using the arms and ammunition so they included the use of violence and they highlighted that this energy this violent trend is also fine through ganpati and shivaji festivals and his journals like kesari and maharat or maratha okay like if you write it in english it looks like maharat but the uh, pronunciation the real na name is maratha so kesari and maratha by these journals he wanted to popularize the idea of militant nationalism which said that you should give blood for your nation you should take arms for your nations you should come out of your houses and if you are getting uncomfortable even then it is fine you can see here kesari and how it was written in marathi so that people could read it in the local language and get motivated by it two of his disciples the chapekar brothers damodar chapekar and balakrishna chapekar they murdered the plague commissioner of pune alexander rand and one lieutenant arrest in 1897 why because uh, the plague commissioner of pune alexander rand what he did uh, these people they were checking as if uh, a lot of deaths were happening at that time if you remember the covid situation what happened during the covid 19 situation when the first phase came in the first wave if you remember when it was very very new people had no idea to deal with it people were afraid and they became very uh, insensitive right even if they knew that if someone is suffering or going through this covid problem 
people started discrimination in the society against the family or the member so you know that covid situation really taught us a lot of things about the reality of life who is the real friend who is the real enemy people understood so many things right so if you just remember that part uh police officers and uh, a hospital department together started investigations and they wanted to search those who were suffering from covid they wanted to admit the person in the hospital but people by themselves were not going to the hospital and they were not taking help from the doctors because they were afraid but you know police they initially they used to go and if you remember sometimes they used to uh, you know be very forceful and uh, capture the person who is suffering pack him and you know with the pp kit just strap the person's body and just take him away like uh, a very insensitive approach was there so this forceful action of checking and going inside the houses to see if somebody is suffering or to do the investigation and uh, do the tests were similarly happening during the uh, plague of 1890s plague is like a infection only this is a kind of infection which spreads by the rats especially and in the unhygienic conditions it spreads more so it was spreaded now the commissioners who used to go forcefully they used to enter the house and uh, by after taking the checks and by collecting those tests and reports when they saw that if someone is suffering they used to capture the person and uh, hospitalize or admit that person forcefully when alexander rand he was there in pune uh, he was just to go and check and see a house but he was stopped by the people and family members that there is a lady giving birth to a baby she was going through the labor pain but alexander rand didn't listen to anyone he forcefully went inside in the insensitive area of the la lady uh, who was uh, who was suffering from that particular labor pain and uh, she was going through the labor pain but uh, alexander rand did not stop he conducted the test and due to his misbehavior it is said that the lady lost the baby infant baby and uh, then in the kesari tilak published this repo, uh, entire report and he uh, you know raised his voice and stated the uh, quotes from mahabharat and uh, how lord krishna used to guide arjun that even if you need to kill a rakshas then don't be afraid of it and it is important for the world and for the society then you should be a violent and you should kill the rakshas so these you know brothers chapekar brothers damodar and balakrishna chapekar they got motivated by reading it and so many other people also got motivated and then they killed this person alexander rand they murdered him so after this only you know uh, tilak was charged of sedition and police arrested him savarkar and his brothers also they organized a mitra mela mitra mela was a secret society in 1899 it emerged it got merged with abhinav bharat abhinav bharat was a separate society but they both came together after mezzini's young italy so if you read the italian unification there the role of mezzini is very very important mezzini was a constitutional uh, constitutionalist and he knew about a lot of things going on in the world he organized italy and he wanted italy to unite and fight together so in 1904 only abhinav bharat and mitra mela they came together and they got merged soon nasik bombay pune emerged as a great center of bomb manufacture in 1909 amt jackson the collector of nasik who was also a well known indologist was killed by anant lakshman kanhare okay he was a member of abhinav bharat anant lakshman kanhare member of abhinav bharat killed 
the collector of nasik okay so here you can see that how people started uh, you know reacting and they knew that somehow the government policies are not fine for the indians and they lost trust on the congress leaders also that's why they thought to behave like this and started the revolution in this way okay now let's come to the punjab area the punjab extre extremism was also there here also so many revolutionary groups were there and they were issue they, they had issues such as frequent famines okay rise of land revenue irrigation tax begar mazduri by the zamindars and other events happening in bengal like the partition of bengal suppression of uh, suppression of uh, leaders political leaders so all these problems were going on in punjab as britishers needed a lot of grains food grains even the need increased during the first world war they started exporting everything from india to britain so with less food grains famines happened because we had nothing to eat a lot of inflation was rising with the inflation land revenue was rising government started taking irrigational tax also and practice of begar increased begar is what it is like a begari mazduri in which let's say a generation to generation problem is there that if a farmer takes loan and if farmer takes loan from uh, a zamindar he will repay the loan in his entire life sometimes farmers were not uh, educated enough they knew no mathematics so they were not able to calculate and understand things so they just used to pay the uh, you know installments uh, emis whatever you call it after keeping the land their own land as a collateral to the zamindar so what zamindars used to do they used to give money uh, money and you know payments they used to make payments to the farmer but farmer after the death of farmer the next generation like sons of farmer they will also continue paying the tax sometimes they lost their land also and they worked on their own land just to survive so that they could get some food but they got no uh, payments there was no a base pay there was no uh, assignment to them they were just working and working had no profit in the uh, they had no share in the profit they were not able to sell the produce uh, on their own price the price was fixed things were fixed by the britishers so they used to just follow it so all these problems were there okay among those active here were lala lajpat rai in punjab who brought up punjabi with the motto of self help at any cost atmanirbhar okay ajit singh was a very very popular leader he was the uncle of bhagat singh who organized the extremist anjumane mohis bane watan please remember the name and with his journal bharat mata okay this is very important line for prelims guys please understand this okay so if we talk about the revolutionaries of punjab we had lala lajpat rai and ajit singh ajit singh was the uncle of bhagat singh ajit singh organized the uh, extremist group known as anjumane mohis bane watan in lahore and he had its journal bharat mata okay before ajit singh's group turned to extremism it was active in urging non payment of revenue they were already fighting for the water rates among the chenab colonists and pari dowab peasants okay so they were already working for peasants they were already uh, talking about it here punjabi area if you see even the green revolution when it came to india it started from punjab why because if if you see uh, farmers of punjab they are they are big farmers they have more lands and a big uh, you know amount of farming population was always there in punjab and they were uh, sometimes wealthy farmers sometimes middle level farmers so that's why punjab and farming is always connected 
since the time of history. Other leaders included Aga Haider, Sayyid Aider Raza, Bhai Parmanand, and the radical Urdu poet Lal Chand, who used the pen name Falak. Okay, Falak. Fine. So these leaders were from Punjab. I hope you understood it. It's very very important point. Okay. Now. Let's talk about the Ghadra party. Okay. This is a very, very important revolutionary group. It, uh, it had its headquarters in San Francisco and uh, they were quite successful also. Uh, let's talk about them. Uh, now, Ghadra party was a revolutionary group around, uh, you know, organized around a weekly newspaper. The name of the weekly newspaper was The Ghadar with its headquarters at San Francisco and branches along the U.S. coast in the Far East. These revolutionaries included mainly ex-soldiers and peasants who had migrated from Punjab to the USA and Canada in search of better employment opportunities. So, when they started earning well and had a good life in the foreign countries, they thought about the Indians. They were based in US and Canada cities. Okay. So, when they were there and they were also along the western Pacific coast, they thought that India is suffering. So, pre Ghadar revolutionary activities were there and they had carried by or on by Ram Das Puri, G. D. Kumar, Taraknath Das, Sohan Singh Bhakna. Lala Hardayal and they all reached there in 1911. They all were very, very active and important leaders and they started few revolutionary activities also. But they wanted to do something big. Now, to carry out the revolutionary activities, the early, earlier activists, they had set up a Swadesh Sevak home. It was at Venkavar and United India House at Seattle. But in 1913, they got the opportunity to establish the Ghadra. So, in 1913, Ghadra was established. Swadesh Sevak home was established. The Ghadra program was to organize the assassinations of officials, publish revolutionary articles, newspapers and other things, and anti-imperialist literature, work among Indian troops stationed abroad, procure arms, collect arms and ammunition, bring about a simultaneous revolt in all the British colonies so that Britishers can lose everywhere and get disturbed from all the directions. The moving spirit behind the Ghadra party were Lala Hardayal, Okay, Ramachandra, Bhagwan Singh, Kartar Singh, Saraba, Barakutullah and Bhai Parmanand. All these leaders and their names are very, very important. Now, I hope you understood what is Ghadra Party. Okay, it was a party organization from San Francisco. They had a newspaper, the Ghadra. These leaders were there and they wanted to do all these things. Okay. By planning the assassination, publish the literature, work with Indians. Uh, troops stationed abroad, procure some arms and ammunition and have simultaneous revolt in all the British colonies. Okay, it was formed in 1913. Okay, now you understood about the Ghadra party. Now see what they did. The Ghadrits intended to bring a revolt in India and their plans were encouraged by two events in 1914. They wanted to do something in India but the plan got highlighted. One by the Komagata Maru incident, second was the first of world, uh, the outbreak of First World War, where Britain and Germany were fighting. So, what is the Komagata Maru incident? Komagata Maru is a name of a ship. It was a ship, Japanese name, and it was carrying 370 passengers, mainly Sikh passengers, and few Punjabi Muslims. 
दे वॉन्टेड टू माइग्रेट देवर वुड बी इमिग्रेंट फ्रॉम सिंगापुर टू वन कावर सो दे वॉन्टेड टू कम इन वन कावर बट दे वर टर्न बैक बाय द कैनेडियन अथॉरिटीज बिकॉज कैनेडा वॉज ऑल्सो अ कॉलोनी ऑफ ब्रिटेन ओके आफ्टर टू मंथस ऑफ प्राइवेशन एंड अनसर्टेनिटी लेट्स जस्ट अज्यूम हाउ कुड बी द कंडीशन इन शिप अ शिप वॉज होल्डिंग फॉर टू मंथस टू जस्ट वेट फॉर द अप्रूवल्स टू एंटर दे वर नॉट अलाउड टू एंटर एंड दे वर सेंट बैक so when they were sent back they came from singapore so from singapore to vancouver they were trying but it was generally believed that canadian authorities were influenced by the british government so they had no power and time to reach singapore again they just came to calcutta in september 1914 the inmates refused to board the punjab bound train and government didn't allowed to come uh, let them come inside the country so in the ensuing conflict with the police at baj baj which is near calcutta 22 persons died they wanted to come inside the country but they were not allowed inflamed by this and with the outbreak of first world war the gadra leaders decided to launch a violent attack to oust the british rule in india and to finish it completely okay because they knew that sikhs and so many punjabis they were now not allowed to enter in india in own country in their own country this is very illegitimate they urged fighters to go to india and kartar singh saraba and raghuvar dayal gupta they you know planned that okay now we will go to india so these people they came to india kartar singh and raghubar dayal gupta now when they came here bengal revolutionaries were contacted and a very popular revolutionary which i have told you rash bihari bose and sachin sanyal these two leaders they were asked to lead the entire revolt so rash bihari bose and sachin sanyal became very very happy that they got such a great opportunity and political dacetis were committed to raise funds now the gadrits fixed 21st february 1915 as the date to start the revolt they wanted it as an armed revolt so they had a big plan in firozpur lahore rawalpindi garrisons they planned it but the plan was failed at the very last moment why because of treachery somebody leaked their plan and the authorities took immediate actions against them and it was aided by the defense of india rules 1915 and if you remember the defense of india rules 1915 british government had a list of uh, you know unproblematic things so that they could handle these revolutionaries and hang them one by one so it was an ending of this entire gadar revolution they were not successful but it is something which shows that how the first phase of revolution was there and the level of planning which was there the berlin committee for indian independence look at the revolutionaries in europe few europeans and few foreigners wanted india to liberate so a berlin committee for indian independence was established in 1915 berlin is in germany again you can see we can only get help we could only get help from the enemies of britishers right so in 1915 by virendranath chatopadhyay and bhupendra datta bhupendranath datta and lala hardayal you know these people they all planned this berlin committee they made it the berlin committee for indian independence they uh, you know other leaders were also there and they worked with the help of german foreign office under zimmermann plan which i told you in which uh, revolutionaries were planning to get some german arms and guns to start a revolt in india but bagha jatin was shot dead if you remember i told you this right what was the full name of bhaga jatin 
what was the full name of bhaga jatin who will tell me if you have not liked the session yet please like it i am waiting i will wait for your answer let's take a small 1 minute wait break Okay so the break is over Yes Jatendra Nath Mukherjee is the right answer Pranav very nice uh you can search it with my name only okay with my name you can search no worries and you can see it on the sunya's platform also now these revolutionaries they aim to mobilize the indian settlers abroad to send volunteers and arms to india to incite a rebellion but they organized this armed invasion but it failed because if you remember the bagha jatin was captured and uh, you know they it was a very big failure that due to a treachery they were not able to achieve something greatly fine so they just aim to mobilize the indian settlers abroad they send the volunteers also uh they had a plan to start some in you know rebellion among indian troops but it was not that helpful fine the indian revolutionaries in europe they sent missions and they wanted to get some helps from different parts of the countries so missions were sent to baghdad persia turkey kabul to work among indian troops indian troops means indian soldiers and indian prisoners of war prisoners of war means soldiers who went there to fight the war and you know they were fighting for the britishers but they got captured and now they were there okay so it was to incite an anti british feelings among the people of these countries one mission was under Raja Mahendra Pratap Singh Raja Mahendra Pratap Singh Barakutullah and Ubaidullah Sindhi they went to Kabul here you can see Virendranath Chattopadhyay okay they went to Kabul to organize a provisional indian government okay provisional indian government means a transitional government which could work later with the help of the crown prince Amanullah now amanullah was also helping but again you will see that it will not get any kind of success in the later stage because britishers you know somehow every time by some way or other they used to get the informations because they had their spies everywhere and they ultimately suppressed everything there was a mutiny in singapore also among the scattered mutinies during this period the most notable was the singapore mutiny which happened in 15th january 1915 by punjabi muslim fifth light infantry and the and the 36th sikh battalion under jamdar chishti khan jamdar abdul ghani and subedar 
दाऊद खान ओके जामदार और जमादार अब्दुल घानी जमादार चिश्ती खान तो बेसिकली दीज थ्री लीडर्स वर देव ओके चिश्ती खान अब्दुल घानी एंड दाऊद खान they you know wanted to uh, have a mutiny because of course they were there in the army but it was crushed after a fierce battle in which many were killed 37 persons were executed and 41 got transported for the life so you can see this picture here how they were shot dead now as we have understood about the revolutionary activities you can see that all these things happened during the first world war in the first world war from 1914 to 19 britain allied with france russia usa italy japan okay so france russia usa italy japan in the first world war later you will see that japan will also become the enemy of britain later right not right now in the first world war they were together and they were fighting against germany austria hungary and turkey so what will happen in the first world war this group of britain france russia usa italy japan they will win and this group will lose germany austria hungary turkey they lost in the first world war so turkey was a very important place for muslims here the khalifa was there the turkish khalifa he was the religious head of islamic community all the muslims in the world they you know had faith with khalifa and they used to follow the orders of khalifa but the power of khalifas got reduced after the first world war because britishers they imposed very harsh treaty on germany also on austria hungary also and on turkey also so when they imposed harsh treaty on turkey the muslims in the entire world got upset even indian muslims they started khilafat movement to protect their khalifa so the khilafat agitation starts after the end of first world war but right now before i start the discussion on khilafat movement and uh, non cooperation movement we need to understand two things first what was world war 1 why it happened and how it influenced the polity in india second the gandhi ji gandhi era who was gandhi ji how he came why he entered in the india indian politics and then what he will do in the khilafat movement so after you understand these three two points then only khilafat movement is a uh, something which would be understood by you just understand here that in the first world war it was a war to increase the colonization britain wanted to be a superpower and germany also wanted to be a superpower they both wanted to acquire more and more lands make more and more colonies and get more and more power in the world initially they had few secret alliances triple alliances but everything got highlighted and it came clear in front of everyone when the world war got started after the end of world war in 1919 you can see the date 1914 to 1919 after the end of world war you will see that a humiliating treaty is going to be there there was a treaty the treaty of versailles which was signed between britain and germany by that treaty of versailles germany was greatly humiliated a very important resourceful land known as rhine land was taken away from germany it was given to france and the german army was also reduced a huge amount of war indemnity was imposed on germany so germany had to pay a lot of money they lost a lot of soldiers resources power wealth and they were disrespected everywhere and then economic depression also got started during the economic depression unemployment poverty inflation was rising in germany in this situation hitler took the opportunity to get some 
great hopes again in you know uh, in the public and get some public support hitler was a great orator so he got public support and he started his own idea nazism the nazism ideology and he became a very supreme leader after which he declared war again on germany so again in the second world war you will see britain and germany will fight and again britain will win so in both the world wars in the first world war and the second world war britishers got the victory and both the times they used the resources of india soldiers of india uh, grains clothes power from india everything was from india here you need to understand that usa was somehow supporting britain in the first world war but most of the time usa followed the policy of isolation understand the policy of usa here in the world war 1 and world war 2 okay to understand this i'll just tell you a small joke there is a joke of a baniya okay once upon a time after a death of baniya baniya i hope you know jo businessman hote hai na baniya to ek baniya tha jiski death ho gayi baniya mar gaya after the death of baniya when he reached to the place of god god gave him two options that you can choose if you want to go in heaven or if you want to go in hell tumhe swarg chahiye ya narak chahiye tum khud apni marzi se chun sakte ho to baniya ne bola ki mujhe beech mein jagah chahiye taki main apni dukaan kholu kyunki dono taraf se hi mujhe customer chahiye so baniya you know he wanted to get a place in between the hell and heaven so that he can open his shop and get customers from both the sides so usa also followed same policy like a baniya usa wanted to have friendship from both britain and germany okay why because he or usa or it never wanted usa never wanted to lose the demand customer demand from any of them usa told uh, britain and germany that you guys if you want to continue the war and fights you need arms and ammunition you need good weapons and to make good weapons we all know that it needs technology so for the technical development study and research is needed with the research a lot of practice is needed after the practice we need to apply it in factories to make the guns and so many other things to do all these things a lot of management hard work focus stability is needed so to follow all these things in a nice way it's very important for a nation to be focused and stable okay so as you guys are fighting britain and germany you both are my friends okay usa said this to britain and germany that you both can continue the fight and whenever you need any kind of supply of arms or any kind of need if it is there during the war i will fulfill it you just pay me instead of uh, you know participating in the war actively i am there to help you i will make arms and ammunitions for you i'll make good weapons for you 
वॉट एवर टेक्नोलॉजी और रिसर्च इज नीडेड आई विल डू इट फॉर यू आई विल स्टडी ऑल द आर एंड डीज डेवलपमेंट प्रैक्टिस वुड बी फॉलोड बाई यू एस ए वी विल मेक फैक्ट्रीज फॉर यू वी विल मैनेज एवरी थिंग एंड वी विल हैव अ गुड स्टेबिलिटी डोंट वरी जस्ट लेट मी फॉलो दी पॉलिसी ऑफ आइसोलेशन लेट मी बी आइसोलेटेड लेट मी जस्ट फोकस एंड गिव यू ऑल दीज थिंग्स तो जर्मनी सेड वॉट अबाउट मी आई ऑल्सो नीड गन्स i also need i also need weapons so you need to support me also so us said yes i will support you also i will supply arms to you you just need to pay me well it depends on your economy and wealth and savings that how much you can buy if you have a good economy if you have more power if you have money then you can just give me money and i'll give you arms and ammunition by doing this usa got money payments from britain also and from germany also right usa got a lot of money from britain a lot of money from germany because it became a market of arms and ammunition for both of them to make these arms and ammunition usa did a lot of r and d uh, engineering practices medical science nuclear technology nano science biotechnology everything was practiced discussed and it was done thoroughly in usa with the focus with this amount of management and uh, wealth coming out as a flow from both the sides usa become super power why usa became super power after the second world war because usa was challenged by germany in the second world war by attacking on pearl harbor basically japan saw this entire game of usa japan understood that usa is developing a lot by getting money from britain and germany by helping both the sides with arms and ammunition but japan also wanted to be a super power so in the second world war japan planned to disturb usa and to disturb usa japan asked germany hitler to attack on pearl harbor which was the us military base so that's why usa entered in the second world war and you know just uh had those nuclear blasts on hiroshima and nagasaki to end the second world war so here you need to understand that this entire story shows that the policy of isolation is sometimes very very important if today india wants to fo follow it if we want to be focused and to uh, you know if we want to achieve something it is very hard for us why because we are always disturbed by china and pakistan we are not able to follow and be uh, very you know uh, focused on things what we want right the problem with india is that uh, we are always disturbed on international grounds and it is a strategy basically okay it was the strategy of europeans and britishers they always wanted uh, developing nations to fight among themselves so that we get arms and ammunitions from them we will buy ships from russia we will buy guns from america we will take their technology so we will give them money and they will give us weapons so we will just waste our money in fighting we will waste our time energy money in just defeating pakistan and china so we will not focus on the development right and you can see the example is coming from the first five year plan in the first five year plan india achieved success after we got independence we focused on agriculture in the second five year plan we focused on industry so pakistan and china knew that after the third five year plan india will be very successful and it will be having a lot of power and wealth so they started disturbing us china also did the chinese aggression pakistan also did the war on kargil so from both the sides we got disturbed and that's why we got the slogan of jai jawan jai kisan why because 
Jawans were fighting on the borders against China and Pakistan, and Kisan they were facing the failed monsoon in India. So it shows that to disturb India, they made us realize that India should focus more on defense and military. Otherwise, it could be attacked by neighbors. So initially, we focused more on agriculture and heavy industries. But after the second five-year plan, we diverted a lot of amount towards the defense of India. and then the leftover is used for the development of country that's why we are still a developing country right so here you understood the mutiny of singapore you understood the scenario of first world war so this period saw the maturing of indian nationalism now indian nationalism will be matured and we will understand more uh, international politics now fine and this is a very very important time frame okay so after getting a matured indian nationalism we will ask for self rule and it would be de uh, developed and demanded by home rule leagues so now from the next class we will discuss uh, this topic home rule league movement in which we will discuss two home rule leagues of any besant and uh, tilak okay so i'll come to this particular topic in the next class i'll end the session here only i hope you liked the session i hope you enjoyed it but still in case you have any doubts you can ask i'm here only i can take your questions let me know if you have anything to discuss Yes you are right Abhishek that's right Okay so you guys need to like the video please like it please share it with your friends and i just want to declare a small holiday for you that uh, it's 22nd of march today so 23 is saturday 24 is sunday 25 is holy and from 26 we can resume the class okay 26th march tuesday okay so you have a three days holiday so we will not have class on saturday sunday monday we will have class on tuesday on 26th march clear same time 8 pm to 10 pm please come on time okay these three days don't just play holy you also need to revise things so whatever we have covered till now we have covered 12 chapters so you just need to revise these 12 chapters read them by yourself do some self study prepare a list of questions which you will ask me on tuesday and if you have any doubts okay then you can come to me and we can discuss it on tuesday so you have a good amount of time to revise things but still uh, i'll just tell you that follow approach that after third reading you need to make the flow chart and always make the flow charts or your notes in a a4 sheet don't follow the registers uh, because see registers are not useful enough keep these a4 sheets with you these kind of a4 sheets are highly useful because you can insert them in the file and folder and whenever your notes needs to be updated you can update with the better understanding books and materials so don't waste uh, you know your money in uh, getting a lot of registers don't use spirals and registers A4 sheets are best to be utilized for the UPSC notes because it's easy to uh, update them. It's easy to remove a page or add a page in a file. So make file for each and every subject separately, and after third reading only you can make the notes. Fine, and you'll get a lot of learning if you make your own notes by writing yourself by making your own notes. You don't know that how. much gain it is it's a very good thing it's a very good practice so follow it and do it like this okay 
so be on time on tuesday i hope i can end the session here thank you so much for coming guys thank you so much for watching those of you having no doubts can leave the session here how many of you are playing holi i hope you will play holi with your friends yes it's a 3 days gap okay doubts sunil you can you can come to me with the doubts on 26th march okay i'll not take any doubt class sunil you can come with the doubt on tuesday don't think like that abhishek you should be very positive thank you so much abhishek okay fine guys i hope all the doubts are clear so i'll just now end the session here i'll see you guys on tuesday see you then take care bye bye happy holi to all of you